She says that and sometimes she doesn't. Hey everyone, welcome back. 7 p.m. Let me get going on over here. It is 7 p.m. Eastern, and we are going to do a little reading together. Um, I'm not sure if I really introduce myself when I get on here. My name is Debbie Cromack. I'm a romance author. I write contemporary romance. Uh, I am the queen of the slow burn. Uh, I enjoy writing friends to lovers, uh, soulmates, slow burn. So if you like those things, my books are for you. Um, we have been reading from someone exactly like me. I'm doing TikTok lives every weeknight at 7 p.m. Eastern. And we're just kind of reading through, reading through for about 15, 20 minutes. And then I share this with my YouTube audience once we're done. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. So let's get started. Um, one thing I did forget to um, address, probably I should have done at the beginning, is I do have a few curse words, not, not a lot, it's not overwhelming. Um, I don't know that I'm allowed to curse on here. So I might insert words <laughs> that are not curse words. So let's get started. Last night we finished off chapter one. So we're going to get started on chapter two. Now we are in Nico's point of view. Ever since I shot to fame, what feels like overnight, about a year ago, my life has changed dramatically. I went from being a no-name actor to getting fired from my acting job to being a gardener for three years. Now I have 10 million followers on Instagram. I starred in a wildly successful erotic movie and I'm making albums of my own music. My life is incredible and I'm grateful for how blessed I am. One thing I'm learning about fame is that sometimes fans have a hard time differentiating a character from the person playing the character. Men seem to think I'm going to whip out a gun and kill them. And women want me to kidnap them and have sex with them. Can I see that on here? I better watch myself. Um, what else would I insert there? We'll figure that out. Uh, it's very strange. Whenever I'm interviewed uh, or talk to fans, I do my best to distinguish myself as being separate from the character that skyrocketed my career. Outsiders may look at my life with envy and think I have it all. Success, fame, wealth, the world at my feet. But there's one thing missing love. My fame has brought me two kinds of women, either hot women who think they're better than everyone else or star crazed fans who cry and tell me they love me, even though they know nothing about me. The hot ones fulfill a basic sexual desire for, um, I'm getting tripped up with the words, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know if I can say that. I don't want to get banned. Um, a basic desire for a while before we part ways. I learned long ago not to hope for anything more when it comes to women and relationships. That's the way it's been. And I'm afraid that's the way it will always be. Though I've learned to accept this as my reality, a petite, fair-skinned, blue-eyed blonde caught my attention from the moment she turned around and stumbled backwards. Destiny's awkwardness is quite charming. The fact that she's pretty and doesn't know it makes her even more attractive. When she came out in that white jumpsuit, I had a hard time focusing. Once she stopped fumbling with the fabric of her jumpsuit and let herself relax, she was unbelievably sexy. Though our interaction was brief, something inside me made me want to know more about her. When Candy invited us to join them, I didn't hesitate to accept. Now we're going to Destiny's point of view. Candy and I get in Roy's car while Giovanna, Nick, Nico, and Sean, in, another one of Candy's crew, get into Nico's car. The rest of her crew pile into a third car. Roy pulls up to the valet parking at uh, Songbird Plaza, and we get out and wait for others to for the others to arrive. Once we're gathered, we head into the club. Candy and Nico lead the way to the hostess stand. Several steps behind them, I see all the women and a few men near us peeling off Nico's clothes with their eyes. How strange that must feel for him, and so violating. Candy waves at me, and we fall in line behind the hostess, who leads us down a black marble hallway to several elevators. I've, been, I've never been here before, so I have no idea where we're going. We get into the elevator, and Candy loops her arm in, in mine, bending her knees alternately to the beat of the music and, grinding, uh, and grinning from ear to ear. 
As the elevator's door opened, we're greeted by a huge private suite. I can't believe she did this for my birthday. It's a little over the top for me, and she knows I don't need any pop and circumstance. I just want my sushi, cupcakes, a good movie, and my best friend. We exit the elevator, and I scan the room. Squeezing her arm in mine, I whisper, Andy, you didn't have to do all this. It must be expensive to have a private suite with a bartender. You're worth it. But I didn't, she winks. Then I hear the hostess. Thank you so much, Mr. Mancini. We're happy to have you here and accommodate your request. Let Barry know if you need anything, um, if, of anything you need and we'll get it for you, she says, gesturing to the bartender. Please enjoy your evening. She smiles politely at him and gets back into the elevator. I'm so confused right now. Surely Nico, Nico didn't do this for my birthday. I guess this is just what he's used to. But he didn't know we were coming here until sometime during the time we were at Candy's studio and he was in the photo shoot the whole time. Maybe because of who he is, they were able to get him a private suite, but this place looks like it would be booked solid. Come on, Candy grabs my hand and leads me to the bar. I stop trying to figure out how we're in this amazing suite and follow her to the black marble top bar where we each sit on a black buttery soft leather, leather covered stool. They shoot her like they're black marble. I must admit it adds to the classy style of the entire place. With the silky fabric falling between my legs, I make sure I keep myself facing the bar. Good evening, ladies, I'm Barry, he says as he grabs two cocktail napkins stamped with the silver logo of a songbird inside a diamond shape and places one in front of each of us. I hear we have a birthday girl in the house tonight. He smiles and adjusts the black bow tie around the, the color of his perfectly pressed tuxedo shirt. That we do, Candy says, as she stands up from her stool and hugs me. And she's right here. Well, happy birthday, he smiles broadly at me. What can I get you both? I'm thinking shots all around. Candy raises her voice as she turns and waves everybody towards us. Oh boy, here we go. Nine slippery nipples, please, Barry. She announces as everyone makes their way toward us. It's my favorite shot. Barry gets straight to work and we watch him line up the shot glasses. Candy holds onto the bar top and dances to the thumping music, swinging her pink hair to the beat. Someone is hovering next to me. I look up and Nico's dark brown eyes meet mine. My heart lurches to a syncopated rhythm. Do you like it? He asks, expressionless. Like what? The sweet. He looks around the room, then returns his gaze to me. Oh yes, it's incredible. Good, I'm glad you like it. Happy birthday, he says, remaining stoic. Wait, what? Now I have to ask, Nico, did you get the suite for my birthday? I cringe inside, unsure I should be asking because it might sound presumptive. Yes, he says flatly, as Barry lines, the, lines up the shots in front of Candy. She passes out the shots and spins my stool so I'm facing the group that is now gathered in a circle around us. I fumble around with the fabric of my jumpsuit trying to cover my exposed legs, but nothing's working. Happy birthday to my best friend in the entire world, she says as she raises her shot glass into the center of the circle and everyone follows suit. Cheers, cheers, everyone shouts in unison and we toss back our shots. Giovanna's position in the circle is straight in front of me and I catch her send a fake smile with a sort of side nod in my direction. I don't know if it's meant for me or Nico. Okay, what can I get everyone to drink tonight? Barry asks as we start putting our empty shot glasses on the bar. I spill myself back toward the bar and Candy orders us s'mores martinis. Let me see if I have anyone over here with comments. Oh, okay. Uh, Nico waits until everyone has ordered. When Barry makes eye contact with him, he smiles. Do you have a McAllen whiskey on hand? Barry gives him a discerning nod. We do, sir, coming right up. The buzz of chatter from the group grows and I look up at Nico. Nico, I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. You really didn't have to do this. I know, that's it, that's all he says. While Barry gets our drinks, let's get a group shot, Candy says, walking over to the tufted red leather sofa in a group of four that are arranged in an open square <clears throat> against a wall covered in a black on black damask print. Nico sits at one end of the sofa and Candy ushers me uh, in next to him, and then sits on the other side of me, followed by two more people. Giovanna plants herself on the arm of the sofa next to Nico. I struggle with the damn jumpsuit fabric again and Nico grabs my hand. It's useless, leave it. The man's expressionless face is infuriating. Because of his reputation, I keep thinking he has sex on the brain, but I 
know, but I might be entirely wrong. Maybe he's trying to make me feel less uncomfortable. I don't get it. Nope, hold on, there's too many of us. We need to squeeze in. Lily, you sit on Sean's lap. She waves in their direction. And Fiona, you sit on the arm like Gigi's doing. She looks to either side of her. Almost, Des, you're in Nico's lap. Before I can object, his large hands are around my waist, pulling me into his lap. My stomach quivers. Giovanna's now looming above me. My stomach whines tighter. With Nico's arm around my waist, his hand naturally falls to the top of my bare thigh, sending warmth through my body. His other arm is around Candy's shoulder. Roy stands in front of us, ready to take our picture with his cell phone. Wait, Roy, I want you in the picture too. Hey, Barry, Candy calls out. Can you come take our picture quickly? All I can think about is Nico's hand on my thigh and I want this picture, picture taken and over. I'm sure he's very used to touching women's bare thighs, so it doesn't phase him in the least, but this woman's thighs are not used to being touched and certainly not by the extremely hot Nicola Mancini. Barry comes out from behind the bar and takes Roy's phone as Roy sits on the floor in the middle of the group. Okay, one, two, three, Barry snaps several pictures. Say where you are, Roy instructs us. Roy instructs us as he gets up and takes his phone to check the pictures. Hurry before my heart beating wildly against his chest. Hurry before he feels my heart beating wildly against his chest. Roy swipes through the pictures. Okay, all good. Thanks, ma'am. You bet. Drink's coming right up. Also, let me know if you want something to eat. I have your, I'll ha I can have your food brought here. Barry goes back behind the bar and continues making our drinks. We unravel from the sofa and stand up, dispersing back to the bar. What did you order, Nico? Giovanna asks through her perfectly pouty lips. You know what I ordered, Gigi. I know, she bats her thick, feathery, long lashes at him. I know everything about you because, because we've been in love since we were little. Her voice is now an octave higher and she's pursed her lips into the shape of a kiss. There's no hesitation in marking her territory. Gigi, go mingle. Unfazed by her flirtation, her flirtatiousness, he sends her away. She soaks and walks away, flipping her long, shiny brunette hair and rocking her hips from side to side. I have no idea what their relationship is at this point, but there's definitely some kind of long-term connection between them. Barry starts setting out drinks on top of the bar while everyone takes their drinks and heads to the, op the opening overlooking the dance floor. And Candy and I sit at the bar. When it's about 7.15, what do we think? Do we want another little bit? How about I'll give you another little bit and then we'll call it a night. I know this is more my scene than yours, but maybe you can let loose a little. Will you dance with me? You know you love dancing with me. She gives me her little girl smile because she knows she's right. While the club scene isn't my thing, I do love to dance, especially with her. Besides, you look so hot. Let's not waste, waste this sizzling hot outfit you've got on. She raises her glass and takes a sip. I feel very out of place. I look down at my drink while a lump grows in my throat and tears swell in my eyes. She puts her hand on my leg and rubs gently. Hey, hey, what's going on? Thank was just her and I at the bar, I confess. I don't know. I guess I just thought I'd be in a different place in life by the time I turned 30, you know? I hold back the tears that sting behind my eyes because I don't want to start blubbering. Oh, honey, she takes my hand in hers and tugs a little, making me look at her. Says where you are is temporary. You're just in a little slump right now. You told me you had a good writing sesh back at my studio. Who knows, maybe that photo shoot was the spark of inspiration you've been waiting for. Maybe, I sit my martini recalling how hot and bothered I was with Nico's hands on me and then being in his arms. All right, I think that's a good stopping place. I'm gonna mark my spot. We will pick up again tomorrow night. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Again, this is from someone exactly like me. It is available on Amazon, in ebook and paperback, and also uh, free to read on Kindle Unlimited. So if you guys are liking it and you wanna pick it up, it is available for you. And now you have been introduced to Candy and Candy is the secondary character, obviously Destiny's best friend. And she's the character my readers have requested that I write a book on. So that is Kiss Away Your Pain that I'm working on right now. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And hey, all of you guys joining, I'm just about to close up shop for tonight, but thanks for hopping on and I'll catch you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Good night. <laughs>